brisket, brisket, pork shoulder, baby pork shoulder, <clears throat> but wait a minute, one of these things is not like the other, what is it, there it is, halal brisket versus choice brisket. And one of these things is not like the other. This is a bone-in bone pork shoulder, or a butt roast, as it says. And these are boneless. Now, you're probably asking yourself, <clears throat> how in the world do you plan on cooking a halal brisket with pork? If you don't know what halal is, Well, to answer your question, we're going to be using two smokers today. Hey, yo, this is Dash. Get ready. All right, so it's been a little while. I'm back out at the smoker. So, well, smokers. I actually have you propped up right now on Bernadette. Yes, I'm using Bernadette. I didn't feel like getting out the wood burner smoker. Just, long story short, it wasn't enough to bring out the big boy. Well, big girl. But anyway, at this point, I'm gonna get my brisket, the halal brisket, into the, into Vicky, the vertical smoker. Now, you guys have seen me clean out the smoker before. I'm not going to bore you with the details of me cleaning out the smoker again, but I am going to give it a final steam clean before I get my the meat in the smoker. Just kind of because uh, I've used the pressure washer and I got, I, I cleaned it out thoroughly. So the whole thing is obviously, if I'm cooking something halal, then I don't want anything that was not halal or what I think it's haram, uh, or haram is bad, I think. But anyway, I don't wanna cook anything that wasn't, or cook in anything that wasn't cooked, you know. So I cleaned out the smoker pretty good, and I'm not gonna tell you it's perfect, cause it, it's never gonna be perfect. Not like it was when it was brand new. Anyway, I say all of that to say, I'm gonna steam, it, steam clean it one more time. Uh, the temperature, the thermometer on the, the top thermometer, it's showing 300 degrees, so we should get some good steam, and uh, let's do it. Just gonna collect some of the, the seasoning that was left on the aluminum foil and put it on top of this brisket here. We'll close this up, take note of the time. I'll see you in a couple hours. I will get a, a thermometer, a temperature probe set up in there a little later. Once I get uh, both smokers situated, I'll get probes in there and I'll monitor to make sure that it's not cooking too fast. But like I said, I'll see you in a couple hours. All right. So some of you guys have never seen Bernadette or not seen Bernadette in a very long time. And there's a good reason for it. To be completely honest with you, I've been doing cooks that I've been able to get away with using Vicky. So if I can get anything I need to cook into the smaller smoker, I do. But today, we're cooking on Bernadette. I'm gonna get her 
cleaned out. Once I finish getting it cleaned out, I'm gonna go ahead and get the smoker loaded. One hellacious fight with the hose later, I am soaked, but I have the hose connected to the pressure washer and I'm gonna get this cleaned out. So, before I, I get too far or, or I forget, I wanted to talk to you guys quickly about one of the major differences I just realized that I don't know why I never picked up on before between a boneless pork shoulder and a bone-in pork shoulder. With the boneless pork shoulder, it's open up. You can open it up and you can actually season inside, which to me would make sure that you got better seasoning better flavor penetration into that big old hunk of meat. With the bone-in piece, all you're able to do is season the outside. So that might be something to keep in mind if you're ever faced with the dilemma of do I use a bone-in pork shoulder or do I use a boneless pork shoulder? Do I get the flavoring and the seasoning or the seasoning solely on the outside or can I actually get some of that flavor and that season to penetrate inside of the meat because the, the meat is opened up. So. There's something for you to think about. So you just saw me get some more charcoal into Bernadette and the temperatures are a lot lower than I want them to be currently. So that's why I'm adding a little bit more charcoal. I'm going to play with the damper, the damper on the uh, right side. But one of the reasons why I think it hasn't come up to temperature yet is because this thing takes like, I think like 30 gallons of water. So I'm having to heat up that water and heating up the water is what's actually keeping the temperatures rather low, but you can see well, we are starting to creep up on the temperatures. We're at 175 over here just about, and this is uh, 125. So at this point, I'm gonna catch my breath, take a seat, cool off a little bit, and get, uh, or just monitor the temperatures here. All right, so it's been a couple of hours, yeah, hours, and uh, I want to show you guys where we are with the temperatures in the grills. My co-star, the cricket over here. All right. So this is Vicky. Vicky's burning a little warmer than I would like to. I came out here to turn it down. This is Bernadette. She actually is not moving, moving as high as I want it to. So I'm going to crank the heat up in her just slightly. This is all part of what you have to deal with as far as 
maintaining your fire you have to i won't say keep your head on the swivel but you gotta you gotta do some work it's not gonna be a uh, set it and forget it type thing now one of the other things too i did do in vicky is when i started i had there's four levels or four rack spaces i moved the brisket down to the third rack space because it was just burning really hot i got or i have a lot of lump charcoal in vicky and the lump charcoal burns a lot hotter and faster so because it's burning a lot hotter that's why we have higher temperatures just deal with it not that big of a deal all right so it's been probably another half an hour or so and like i said when i last left off i adjusted the temperatures and you see 275 275 uh bernadette still doing her thing vicky's over here doing her thing i am in the process of Cleaning up and cleaning out the garage. I, I made a pretty hellacious mess over here on the floor trying to clean this thing out. So uh, I guess this is a little before. We'll see what it looks like after. All right, so uh, I guess a little situation report. The garage floor is looking better. It's just uh, it's gonna take some time. It takes a little while to kind of pressure wash and move all of the, all this mainly what it is is the dust and ash from the grills and smokers well smokers primarily out here but we just kind of pressure wash on down and then move the water out to get some of the dirty water out and come back and clean up but it all pools right in this little i don't know what that would that exactly be called but there's like three pieces or three pores on the floor and there's a i don't know maybe there was a wall here or something that they took down i i don't know Anyway, uh, it's time for me to wrap the halal brisket, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll just finish it out here. I'm out here working, so I'm going to try to finish it out here. Uh, also, Bernadette is still chugging along. Chugging along there. Uh, so she's dropped down to about 250 a little bit, so I will uh, check. And I think I'm going to have to add some more charcoal. That's all. So as I told you, the temperatures were starting to fall in Bernadette. So you saw how much charcoal I added. That was a whole, uh, I think, 19 and a half pound, 20 pound bag of Kingsford charcoal. It'll take probably 15, 20 minutes for it to come up to temperature. Once it does, I'll have to throttle the intake back slightly. I'm trying to maintain a temperature uh, on the grate right before that first piece of pork shoulder at uh, 200 and about 75 degrees. So, so far, so good. We're moving right along with our cook. Plenty of time so far. Uh, nice relaxing cook, nice day. It's cool outside, that's so why I'm coming out here kind of taking a breather. It is very warm inside of the garage, which is to be expected because of the fact that uh, those smokers are hot. All right, anyway, I'll see you guys. I'll check in with you guys a little later. All right, so been a couple more hours. I'm beat. I finished cleaning up out here. I, as soon as I cleaned up this area, I had to open up the door to get some more charcoal in there and proceeded to make it a mess again. But, see the rest of the floor is pretty spick and span. Uh, you know, I, I, I have stuff all along the sides here, so I tried to clean this way, that way, and push everything out the garage that way. 
hardest part about cleaning the floor when it's well cleaning in here because of the fact that the floor uh, drips back down to here is chasing my tail trying to keep the water out keep the water moving out but I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired the halal brisket is actually almost done way ahead of schedule it's much thinner than I wanted it to be though so again way ahead of schedule and then the pork shoulders and the brisket that I have in uh, Bernadette are getting ready to go in the house in the oven as soon as the halal brisket finishes and I'll see you guys once this is all done. All right, so it is go time. I am in the car and I'm headed out. I have two deliveries. The first delivery is about 20 minutes away. It's to one of my coworkers take the food. Uh, so she's getting the uh, halal brisket and then the other coworker is getting the other brisket and uh, five pounds of pork. So basically he's getting five pounds of brisket and five pounds of pork. Now, I wanted to bring this up real quickly, really quickly while I'm thinking about it. The differences between the halal brisket and a regular brisket, a choice brisket, and what I cook usually. The halal brisket was a, and it said on the package what the grade was, but it wasn't like choice or select or anything like that. It was like regular grade or whatever the, I don't know what, what would be under choice. That being said, it was smaller and thinner than a choice brisket. It did cost me a little bit more. It was more expensive, but it cooked faster because of the, of the, the I won't say the profile, because of the shape of the brisket, it was a little miscut. It didn't have a very, very pronounced point on it. It was more flat. It was flatter, all right? I don't wanna say it was more flat than it was point. It was flatter. Now, as far as cooking the bone-in pork shoulder versus the bone-less pork shoulder, even though the bone-less pork shoulder was bigger, the bone-in pork shoulder took longer to cook. So those are just two observations I've had over cooking, you know, similar meats uh, at the same time, basically in a similar or, uh, you know, in a similar environment. Anyway, I'll probably pick this up after I make the delivery, the first drop off, and we'll talk again before I head to the second. I head to the second. Well, 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 well. Guess who didn't actually pull out the camera? This guy. Anyway, uh, before I close this video out, I wanted to show you just a small little clip that I took while I was in the house of the second delivery. We had a nice little setup. They put they just kind of put the brisket out. My friend's wife is a really big fan of uh, Popeye's chicken. She cut up some watermelon just kind of as an appetizer. She had a cheese plate. And she's Filipino, so she actually made some she made some noodles. I don't know exactly what was in it, aside from the fact that it was like chicken and some vegetables and other things like that. But I did hang around, I had some drinks with them. As always, really want to take a moment and say thank you to you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. If you like what you saw today, or if you learned something, please leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to turn the notification bell on. Also, quick reminder, we go live on this channel every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Hang out, shoot the breeze, you know, just come hang out. We are a definitely barbecue family and we uh, talk about topics related to barbecue for the first hour of the live stream and the second hour we kind of just leave it open and we talk about whatever anyway uh thank you so very much again as always for watching and i'll see you guys next time oh bottom baby <laughs>